Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak, and I'm going to show you how to quiet down a Eheim filter. And when you pull this one apart, this is a Echo 600. There. As you notice, I have a little spacer here. And this is made out of plastic that I put on. Now what I've noticed is that when you get these motors, whether they're Eheim, Fluvo, or anybody else, there's laminations inside of this motor. It is uh, epoxy filled for safety. But there's a lot of things that can go wrong with these motors to make them start making all kinds of noise. And one of them is they can start rattling on you. And that is because this is your rotor, and inside here is your stator. Okay, and this is made up of laminations. So, in America, we have 60 cycles a second. So that means every second this thing is moving 60 times. So, to go freely. It depends on how many poles are in the laminations of the designer who designed this motor. Uh, it depends on the quality of the stampings. Then after that they're heat treated to anneal the laminations. It depends on a lot of things why motors will actually start rattling. The thing that I've noticed is for example like cheap motors, power heads and things that are made in China they don't have the tolerance like some companies will keep and they won't last as long. I've had motors like uh, quiet ones, 5,000 gallons an hour and the impeller just literally disintegrated itself within a year. Then again I've had Supreme motors that run the same way as this and they've lasted for 10 years. So I've had Ehi Motors, where this has lasted for about 18 years, and finally it just broke apart. And this is nothing but a magnet here. The rotor is nothing but a magnet. You can see. And it's the pulsing of the electricity that keeps it spinning. Now, the engineer designs these laminations, what kind of tolerance you're going to have. They designed this part, but as you notice, I have a little plastic washer, if you want to call it that, or spacer, in here. Now, I've been doing this for years and years with these Eheims, making these little spacers. And as soon as I get an Eheim, the first thing I do when I buy it brand new is I open it up. And first thing I do is I put one of these little spacers. See, I have a whole container full of them these little spacers here. And I am going to show you how to make these. So what you have to do is you put one in, I start at the top, and then I place it back into the motor. Now why do I do that? Well, without the spacer, what happens sometimes because of accuracy, it's not quite as accurate as, as you would like it to be, there's not a whole lot of space between the shaft the OD of the shaft and the ID of this impeller here. Okay, this is the ID, this would be the OD. And what happens is during manufacturing, if it's not everything is absolutely perfect, okay, this is no fault of anybody's really. If, if you got high quality parts, if everything isn't quite set just right, this impeller will, will do this. Okay, or it may even rub against the bottom of here very slightly because it will wibble wobble in there a little bit. Okay, and that's usually what happens is the wobbling of the impeller inside here like this, it will wobble. Now there's a lot of room in here, so you're not going to get this magnet touching the sides because there's quite a lot of room. What you get touching is the impeller 
moving back and forth, hitting and scraping on the bottom and starting to cause that rattling and throwing it out of balance. So once that starts, you're going to start getting the rattling. Ehi makes a pretty good pump. And I tried this with Fluvals and it didn't work. I do not know why. Maybe the tolerances on the pump are not as close as what Eheim holds. But now, if I put this in here with that little spacer, that spacer gives this enough room where if you spin this, it will stay off the bottom here. You may need one, you may need two. This is something you'll have to experiment with. That, that spacer doesn't allow this because see right now you can tell the magnet is being pulled down in and then the magnetic field if it doesn't lift us up a little bit and catches it if it gets too close it will start making that rattling noise so these help you may need one or you may need two you may need one on the top you may need one on the bottom you need may need one on top and bottom. It just depends on how the head was set up. Like I said, I tried this with other manufacturers and sometimes it's worked and sometimes it hasn't. But with Eheim, it seems to have always worked. So you grab yourself a plastic lid. Now this can be a butter container. This one is from something else. And you just cut it like this. And I like to use usually a food container. This one is from uh, soap, but for demonstration periods I'm, I'm using this. And I'm just going to demonstrate what to do. Next thing you have to do after you get the lid, they're all about the same thickness. Some of them may be a little thicker, depending on the butter container, some may be thinner. That's why I said you may need one or you may need two. But the next thing you want to do is get yourself a drill. This is a 125 thousandths drill, one eighth. And you need yourself a drill. You'll need at least a one eighth drill. And a drill, of course. And then you'll need one of these hole punchers. These you can buy at uh, uh, Hobby Lobby or one of your uh, stores that sell, you know, paper and things like that. Uh, staples, if, if you still have a staples in town anymore. Uh, but I think you can even buy these at Walmart if you go in their craft section. And this is just a hole punch for paper, but it works with this. And that's how you make your little... Washer. So the first thing you want to do is just drill a hole. And you can drill several of them. And that's it. Once you drill your hole, take off the burr. Then you take the hole puncher and line it up right where the hole is in center. That's it. That's how you do it. You have just made yourself a plastic washer. And you can make several of these out of one lid. Do the next one. There you go. I just made two of them instantly. These little plastic washers doesn't matter what color they are. Makes a real nice little plastic work so you don't have to buy anything. That's basically it on how you make these. And these then will fit over the shaft. On top or bottom, depending on. I always like to start with the top. See? Fits perfect. I always like to start with the top, put one on the top, see if that uh, that helps. If you don't have any noise, leave it alone. If you're still having noise, 
then you may have to add a second one. And of course, you'll just have to keep experimenting. And here's the little one that I have in this particular uh, head to this 600. There. And of course, you put this back on. And that's it. It just prevents the impeller from bouncing up and down, or when it starts to wibble wobble that blade, it stops it from touching any other plastic. And that's what will stop your noise. And I'm sorry to say, but it works better on EE Himes than I've noticed that it works on some of the other manufacturers. I don't know if it's because the Eheims have a closer tolerance with their motors than some of the other manufacturers. Um, I can't tell you why. I've been more successful with all my Eheim pumps. So as soon as I buy an Eheim pump, it's brand new, I make a whole bucket of these things, as you can see, and I put one on just like I showed you, and I've never had a problem with the Eheims ever rattling or the uh, uh, impeller going bad. Like I said, I had one for 18 years, and the impeller finally just broke apart. The, uh, uh, the magnets just all broke apart. So that I was uh, quite shocked of. But anyhow, it's just a short video to show you uh, there was one of my subscribers named Liz asked me to please show how to make these. Like I said, just, just find a butter lid. That's all you need. You don't need anything special. And just drill your holes close to the edge so you can get the hole puncher and just punch them out. And that's it. That's how you quiet down an Eheim pump. I hope this helps you if you're starting to have a little bit of rattling noise in your pump, or even if it's brand new and it seems to be making a little bit of noise, don't get mad at the manufacturer. It's just because there's some very close tolerance between how this has to run. All these pumps has to run. And if they try to hold the tolerances even closer, like a, a, a walkie pump or something like that, the power head's going to get higher and higher in price. Okay, that, that's all there is to it. It's just going to get more expensive and more expensive as I have to keep putting more and more time into making the lambs and making everything line up because this is just an injected mold injection. So you're going to be off there. Your OD and ID are going to be a little off. You got all these things now starting to build up and you start losing your talent. So it seems like Eheim holds tighter tolerances than maybe some of the other manufacturers. That's maybe why they're a little more expensive, plus they're German-made. But um, I hope this helps you. And until next time, uh, hope you're doing great on the fish. Oh, yeah. Before I leave, um, I did a night trait test on the fish tank, and uh, it was zero. And I did everything exactly according to instructions, sh shook the bottle, everything else. Everything was still zero. Um, the, it did go up because I'm using a BCB in it. It went up to like 20 parts per million. And I was a little shocked. I, I did the test and, oh, wow, what's happening here? Went up to 20 parts per million. So I thought, well, let me check. I took the canister apart. I took a look at what was in the... Um, canister and it wasn't really that dirty so I figured okay I'll clean everything out the BCB basket all I did was take it and put it off to the side cleaned everything out cleaned all the hoses out uh, put all new floss back in cleaned the sponge out real good um, as you know I say you don't have to worry about uh, you know saving bacteria because your BCB has everything so I cleaned everything back out again, put everything back together, put it back on the tank, and I'm running it. And that was uh, two weeks ago I did that. So I did another test just this morning, and that showed zero. Okay. 
So your BCB is breaking in, but remember, be patient. 45 to 60 days at least for that to really break in. So, yeah, I showed on another video that I had zero nitrates. Then it did go up, I admit. It went up to like 20. It's like, oh, wow, let's find out what's wrong. There's something wrong. And I was really surprised that at the bottom of the canister, there was very little of the kitty litter. Nothing to even worry about. Nothing. I, you know, you just dump it out. So a little bit of kitty litter leaked out, leaked out of it. I'm sorry. And uh, I was really surprised at that, that it's really not losing much. So it was easy to do. Put it back together again. Didn't have to worry about cleaning that. Put all new floss in. So today I just did one, a test, and it, was, it read, read zero. It was all yellow. I'll do another test in another week and see what it reads. But, uh, yeah, if you do make a BCP in, in a canister, let's say you're using the Eheim, whatever, I don't care what, what you're doing, you could have that fluctuation. I had a fluctuation. I was reading zero, then all of a sudden it went up to 20 parts per million. And now as I weighed it and I cleaned out the canister, it went back down to zero. Is there something in the canister that could have been causing it? Could have been. I don't know. I'm just being honest with you. It, now it's back down to zero, and that was two weeks ago I cleaned the canister. So uh, that was the original startup filter floss and stuff like that that I do with. And it wasn't real dirty. And, and the reason I wanted to do it is to find out what kind of maintenance am I having. Do I have to do it every 30 days? Do I have to do my maintenance every 60 days? Do I have to do my maintenance every 90 days? That's what I try to find out. I let it run for 30 days. It wasn't that dirty. Maybe this one, I'll let it run for 60 days and see how dirty it is. And I'll, I'll let you know if uh, the nitrates go up. But as of right now, uh, everything looks good. Not having an algae problem. And... Until next time, uh, hope your aquariums are doing great.